when you're managing a recirculating aquaculture system, you're managing much more for the bacteria mm -hmm. than you are the fish. Okay. So the bacteria are really everything in this system. Okay. You know, if, if the bead filter is the engine, the bacteria are the gas. <laughs> Okay. If I don't back flush my filter and I just use like a rock filter, which is a bed of rocks that just grow, mm -hmm. the bacteria will consume as much as the fish in terms of oxygen. Mm -hmm. okay. So here you think you're yeah. growing fish yes. and, yeah. and you're really gardening bacteria. Bacteria, I see. But I can, by back flushing, by the way, I can reduce that, that oxygen demand by a factor of four to five. I see. I and, see. And because I'm not letting those bacteria grow old, as mm -hmm. soon as they grow, I take them out, put them in a sludge basin, and they're gone. And they're gone. Okay. Makes perfect so sense. It's, so that's how we get this really high productivity on a relatively small unit. Okay. And protect the fish at the same time. Makes sense. Now, one of the problems of this particular bead right here, not the problems, is that the bead is perfectly smooth, and when I wash, I hit all parts of that bead surface equally. Mm, okay. And, and so there's no protected sites. Okay. The other thing is a circular bead only has 35% porosity. Okay. And that eventually I just fill up the space with the bacteria. So okay. we developed what's called an enhanced nitrification bead mm -hmm. that is designed to produce um, uh, more bacterial storage space or living space, if we may use that term. Okay. And here you can see this is, this is a reshape plastic bead. So these have some... These are the standard beads. So this is sort of shaped like a, a little kayak or a, a, what we call down here is a um, pea row. Okay. Pea row. The local flavor. Yeah, it's I got crossbars on the mm -hmm. top and it's got a keel along the bottom. So it's really like a little boat. Yeah, I see. And in those little indentations on the top, the bacteria, when you wash, are not touched at all. Okay. And this gives us a, a place that allows us to wash with a, what we call a high frequency. Okay. As often as once every 30 minutes, minutes. 40 minutes. Okay. So it's possible. Uh, but you can see, that's the same material, by the way. You'll see tomorrow where it's manufactured. Okay, so this is a different type, yep. Yeah. That's a standard. Okay. I see. In the wastewater area, our strategy is to consolidate treatment. It's the same for the for the aquaculture. In a wastewater treatment, you generally have a grid chamber, a sedim sedimentation tank, a biological treatment unit that takes, in this case, just BOD out, okay. the organics, mm -hmm. and then a secondary clarifier to take the bugs out that you just grew. Just grew, okay. And then you go to tertiary where we'd have a sand filter or something for nitrification. Okay. Well, it turns out this filter can do anything but the first step. It's not very good at grit removal. Okay. Well, we could do this whole thing in one step, short of disinfection. Right, okay. And so, but it, in terms of practice, the most easiest thing for us to do in a wastewater area is pick up what's called secondary treatment. Do the biological together with the clarification mm -hmm. and the nitrification in one unit. Mm, okay, yep. So this is where the consolidation theory works. So you Go can see all of a sudden, have set up five steps, you have down here now four, I guess six to four steps, mm -hmm. you're saving money. Yeah, yeah. The inset here is a, a system over here that we set up in Texas. There are parts of Texas where they don't have a water supply. And so recirculating, recirculating water is very, very important. In this case, they had a restaurant and they took the, what we call the black water from the restaurant, that's mm -hmm. the toilet flushings and the grindings and stuff, mm -hmm. put it through a traditional wastewater treatment plant then, then used our system to polish it so that you essentially have something that looks like drinking water. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, we don't recommend you drink that water, right, right. but they did use it for secondary purposes like uh, watering the plants and okay. that type of thing. Okay. And our dust control actually in a rodeo arena next door, they actually paid them for the water to dust control. Okay. Shows. okay. Now here's the sequence that all the filters, this is the, what we call a polygeyser filter, and a polygeyser filter is one of our bead filters mm -hmm. that washes pneumatically. Okay. That means it washes with air bubbles. Air bubbles, okay. And this unit has uh, three major compartments in it. It has a bead filter compartment under the screen up here. And your water comes in under that and goes through the screen and then comes out the top. So we just, the beads are static, not mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. Water passes through them. Mm -hmm. All our bead filters operate on top of okay. them. Okay. Underneath it, it has what's called a drop zone, which the, the beads will drop into when they're washed. Mm -hmm. 
and outside this cone right here is an airtight compartment that we fill with air slowly. When it fills fully with, with air, it, all the air suddenly comes out of what's called our trigger. And when it comes in, the air blows through this bed, shakes everything up, makes the beads hit each, hit each other, mm -hmm. and the solids and the biofilm are separated from the beads. Okay. And then everything is dropping because the air compartment is letting this air out, water drops in. Okay. It. Right, and that, so we have the, the beat bed, the drop zone, and the charge, what we call the charge chamber. The charge chamber. Okay. Now, in normal operation, which is filtration, you're gonna be in that condition, let's say 23 hours and, uh, to say uh, 55 minutes a day. Okay. In other words, if you walk into a filter, it's gonna be filtering. Okay, right, right. When this air compartment fills up, this trigger releases all the air. With our current designs, we try to do that in three to five seconds. Mm, okay. So as you will see tomorrow, it's not a gentle wash. It, it's a very aggressive wash. Aggressive one. Right, and, and it happens though quickly though, if you're not there, you missed it. <laughs> now, is this one similar to the endurance filter? It is. Endurance okay. is a variation of this. Okay, okay. This is a, what we call our HPPG, high profile, pri profile polygizer. Okay. And it's a tall cylinder shape one. This is a commercial unit. Okay. All right, the endurance models are more for home operations. Gotcha. Right? Okay. That backwashing occurs, you get the, everything mixed up. And then as the new water comes in, the beads float up. Mm -hmm. It's part of the secret here is a bead float up, whenever a bead below floats to the top, water has to move down to mm -hmm. replace the bead that just floated mm -hmm. up. So as you're floating up, the water's flowing down yeah. and you're separating out the solids from the beads. See it. And then the inlet's above the, the solids and everything settles and we have a sludge compartment down here okay. where it accumulates. Then it basically the influent water refills the system and you continue. Okay. Now, is there are there any fine solids that make it back in here once this begins to fill back up? So that depends on the model. Okay. Okay. The most current models we try to virtually eliminate that okay. completely. Um, all models have something coming out. Something. If, you, if yeah. you take a measurement with an instrument, you'll see a little increase in turbidity. Okay. Our best models you don't see don't see under most circumstances anything. And in practice, uh, the newer models, if you're like on a koi pond across the pond or you're in a fish tank, you're not going to notice it. Not going to notice it, okay. What it is recycling, by the way, is mainly bacteria from the filter. Okay. They run back into the tank, they come right back to the filter, they start working for us. Okay. Again. So okay. we don't consider it a big disadvantage. Okay. 